exploded. Really? Oh, I heard a crunch. I broke it. Oh yeah. And broke the cap. And we don't have to explode our drive shaft. It's already exploded itself. Check out this carrier bearing. That's not good, but uh, it gets worse. So I'd bet dollars to donuts that yoke is bad, but let's get the drive shaft out, see what we're dealing with. Normally have Loctite on them. Maybe this one doesn't. I don't know. Just in case we can actually put it back together. Will it fit? Does anybody see a problem here? Maybe in this region? I feel like this little guy just, it just isn't quite what it used to be. Actually, this one's worn pretty bad too. Uh, all jokes aside, this is not uncommon. I probably see a U-joint worn this badly at least once a month. It's usually on a, a three-quarter or a one-ton truck. Uh, for whatever reason, they just tear them up now, this truck's got 360,000 miles on it. I'm pretty sure they've been replaced. This U-joint's been replaced at least once before. And uh, yeah, it's definitely time for it to be replaced again. There is some good news though. I think we can reuse this yoke, which is unbelievable. So normally when they wear, when they wear this badly, the cross here, it wears through the cap and then it just keeps right on going. It'll wear right through the side of the yoke and you'll end up with a big divot over here. 
And if you try to just put the, put the cap in with a void behind it, you're asking for trouble because the cap is not designed to carry a load. It's only designed to transfer the load to the yoke. Now this one has a little bit of a, a nick here at the bottom, but that's below the load bearing part of the cap. So I think we're gonna be all right. It's got a nice snug fit. Yeah, that's pretty miraculous. So normally what I have to do is send these to the driveline shop. They chop the yoke off, they weld a new one on, and then they had to rebalance the whole, the whole assembly. But this little nick here shouldn't affect the balance. I think we're gonna be just fine. We have parts, got a new carrier bearing and a new U-joint. Yes, you heard me correctly, a new U-joint. I'm not gonna replace the other two. There's nothing wrong with them. Go ahead and leave your comments down below. Well, from past experience, I can tell you guys that there's no way to install a U-joint that pleases everyone on the internet. If you use a hammer, they're mad because you didn't use a press. If you use a press, they're mad because you didn't use a vise. If you use a vise, they're mad because you didn't use a, I don't know, C-clamp or U-joint press or oh, whatever. So I'm gonna do it the way I feel like doing it, which is by hitting them with a hammer. Once again, leave your comments below. Really the big thing to watch for is just the greaser. You want them all to have the same orientation so that when you go to service the truck and grease it, they're all lined up. And then we also want it to face, the grease to face towards the shaft, not towards the flange. This one's not so bad. It's got kind of got clearance on the sides, but sometimes it's about impossible to reach around and grease those things on the flange side. I like to run a file through these bores just to make sure there's no, no burr on the inside from where we press the old one out. Usually get a little burr right, kind of right here and right here. And then clean out your snap ring groove. Now sometimes in our climate, these ears actually corrode so badly that there's no snap ring groove left. And I've seen people do all kinds of weird stuff. They weld the snap rings to the ears or weld the caps to the ears. Uh, there's really no way to fix that except replacing the yoke. I marked the yoke and the shaft before I took it apart. So we're gonna put it back together in the same orientation. Gotta be, both caps have to be engaged with the cross.
Got to drive that one in just a hair more to get the snap ring to seat. This carrier bearing really isn't that bad. The bearing itself is fine. It's just the rubber that's starting to go. So it should be centered and it's actually deformed to one side and then all these webs are really badly torn. So we're gonna replace it. There's the new one. I'm sure there's some kind of a special installation tool. I don't have it, so I made my own out of a, a bearing race. This is a inner race. I have an old tapered roller bearing. It's gotta fit past this shield and push on the inner race. You don't wanna push on this shield because if it contacts the bearing, it'll make a bunch of noise. Same thing with this shield here, this inner one. That's replaceable, but nobody had a new one, so I just straightened it up the best I could. There was a little dent over here in the one side. You've got to straighten that out, otherwise it'll contact the shield on the bearing, and again, you'll have noise. Stick that on there like so. We'll need an extension, which is just a piece of old exhaust pipe here. And a striking device. go. All right, now we got to install this this guy here, which I believe goes this way. Well, crap. The boot's torn. Actually, there's a whole piece of it missing. It should look like this on both ends. It's also got the wrong, the wrong clamp on it. So somebody's been in there before. Anyway, I'll have to order that. Nobody's gonna have that. So I guess we're, I guess we're on hold for now. All right, folks, welcome to the third day of our simple U-joint replacement. We have a boot. There's your part number from, from the Dodge dealership. And this one has both ends, which is a, an improvement and it has the right style clamps. We're gonna put a little lube on our shaft. Always a good idea. One thing I'll say about these carrier bearings, the shield here, you see how much run out it has? And that can cause interference. I had a little interference on the back side, so I just took a, an old scraper and I just gave that shield a little whack. Made it a little more round. Now she spins nice and free. I mean, it'll self-correct eventually, but probably have some annoying noises. I even have the special tool for this style clamp. I'm pretty sure these drive shafts are balanced as a complete assembly. And I marked everything before I took it apart so we can get it back together in the same orientation. I just wanna check this slip yoke and make sure I got the U-joint indexed right. It's pretty a pretty fine spline. 
So I'm at zero degrees on that one. And we're at zero degrees here. You guys probably already know this, but in case you don't, the problem with U joints is that they're not a constant velocity joint. So anytime that the shaft is on an angle like this, if this yoke here turns at a constant speed, the driven shaft will be going faster or slower than this yoke, depending on where it's at in its angle of rotation. And that constant acceleration and deceleration can cause a vibration. So to get around that, we have to have the U-joints phased to each other. So this yoke and this yoke have to be in line. And by doing that, the change in velocity here cancels out the change in velocity here. If you don't have them phased the same, it actually amplifies that problem and makes the vibration even worse. Constant velocity joints obviously don't have that problem because they have a constant velocity. If you've ever had a half shaft apart, you know you can just put those back together however you want. The orientation doesn't matter. But on a U-joint, it's very important. I have cleaned and lubricated the tail shaft. I believe that's what it's called. Tighten on these bolts. Yeah, drive shaft looks good. I think the exhaust might need some work. Looks like bailing wire, bailing wire, bubble gum weld, and a giant rust hole. Well, we'll put that on. Well, I'm not a Dodge expert, but doesn't this seem like kind of an odd design? to have two slip yokes in the same drive shaft. I guess there must be a one piece drive shaft option and they use the same tail shaft. But on a Ford, that would be a, a fixed yoke there at the back of the transfer case. Are we done already? It's only been three days. Uh, I did grease the U joints. I know it's, I know it's hard for you guys to trust some goon on the internet. And if you didn't see it on the camera, it didn't happen. But trust me, it did happen. I've got some other stuff to do on this rig. It's leaking power steering fluid. Not sure if it's got a bad hose or an o-ring or what we're going to find there and then he wants to replace the cap for the fuel filter i guess the one 
on it is cracked. And then he's got some aftermarket bits and bobs to install. That's a cold air intake. That should be pretty simple. And he's got a complete exhaust system for it, I guess. I don't know if I'm going to do that or if he's going to do that himself. He also wants me to install a leveling kit. But I'm not installing those monsters. That's a three inch spacer. This thing will look ridiculous. Jacked up three inches in the front. Can you imagine? You put a trailer on it, it's gonna be, it's gonna be squatted pretty good. Plus, I don't even know if we can do it with the factory shocks. I think you gotta have longer travel shocks and then plus your camera, your caster angle is gonna be all wrong. And these dodges are hard enough on ball joints as it is. I mean, I have installed these leveling spacers before, but you know, usually it's pretty mild, like a you know one inch or one and a half inch spacer. Plus, I don't like these plastic ones. I've seen those crack. I like the ones that are welded up out of steel. Uh, it's better to get a real lift kit, you know, with longer springs and the dropped pitman arm, and you know, do do the thing right. All right, folks, we made it to the best part, the end. Uh, be sure to check out Rain Man Ray's repairs. I'll put a link here or here or down in the description or, or somewhere. He seems like a pretty cool dude. I did email him before I made this video to make sure it was, it was cool to sample his videos and kind of poke a little bit of fun at him. And he said, have at her. So I appreciate that, Ray. I learned about his channel from you guys in the comments. So thanks for that. And thanks for hanging out with me. Hopefully I'll see you back here on the next one. Well, it's time for fuel hoarding. All right? I don't see a stand. That railroad ties. I think it's been a year since I messed with this thing. I better see if she'll still start. <laughs> yeah, I don't think it's going to work. Well, I don't see any signs that my hacked up fuel tank's been leaking. So, maybe it's got fuel. I don't know. Make sure she's still got oil. Oh, yeah. What does Hank say? It's making oil. Making oil. Okay. That's neutral. That's neutral. Here we go. I'll give her a little gas. Pretty cold today. Might have to give her a little sniff of ether. about this tank? Yeah. Just needs a couple of patches. Yeah. Maybe a new lid. Well, this one looks pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, maybe I'll 
pretty good. Pretty good. Wonder why they dug it up. Doesn't make any sense. Well, forklift still runs. Got the tank loaded up, which we did not need the forklift for. And uh, supposedly we have an engine for the loader, so stay tuned for that.